In this episode of the Future One Web Show and Podcast, we meet Kyle Kissner and Tom Bean, who are the co-founders of BZX, who just launched a new product called Fulcrum. This is the most simple and powerful way to lend and margin trade. It is a first and only completely trustless platform for margin. It does not use centralized price feeds or centrally administered margin calls. It is permissionless and rent free. There are no fees and no accounts. We spend time learning their story and walk through their product offering and speak to the state of crypto and what trends are needed to consider when it comes to decentralized finance. The material contained on this web series and podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be construed as an offer or a recommendation to buy or sell any security, nor is it to be construed as investment advice. Um, so super excited to kick off another episode of our Future One te- uh, video show and podcast. You know, I've got Tom Bean and Kyle Kissner from Fulcrum. Um, so, you know, super excited to hear about you guys. Um, this is the first time I'm doing a three-way episode. So um, that'll be interesting. We'll see how this goes. Um, so Tom and Kyle, maybe, you know, who wants to take the lead here as far as, um, you know, number one, maybe talking about your background. Maybe we can do this. Why don't both of you guys give a quick snapshot, snapshot of your background and then one of you guys kind of lead, um, you know, how your backgrounds and your synergies kind of started uh, you know, the project that you guys are working on. How's that sound? Sure. It sounds good. Yeah. I'll let you take the lead on that, Kyle. Cool. So why don't you do this, Kyle? Why don't you give me a quick snapshot of your background, your story, where you're from, and then Tom, we can do that. And then Kyle, I'll let you, um, talk about the project. How's that sound? Yeah, it sounds great. Cool. And Kyle, do you think you can speak in a little or possibly use maybe, uh, an mm-hmm. earpiece? Um, that will help with the audio, if uh, if possible. I got I got a little bit closer. Is that better? Uh, that's better. Yeah, and just try to speak up, and I think we'll be good. All right. Yeah. Sure. All right. So uh, I'll go first, I guess. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. All right. So uh, my name's Kyle Kistner. I'm co-founder at BZX. Uh, it's Tom Bean. He's my co-founder. Uh, we started this project about two years ago. We saw the, uh, the current development in the DEX space, uh, the decentralized exchange space, and we thought that there was a real need for margin trading uh, and shorting and leverage and all of these different functions. And we wanted to bring something like Bitfinex uh, over to the DEX space, but sort of along the lines of 0x in a more decentralized way. So that was our goal when we started. Um, my background, is in uh, computational biology. So I got my master's in computational biology. Uh, I was in Atlanta. Um, Tom is a background in computer engineering. Uh, He got his uh, bachelor's uh, from Georgia Tech and uh, he got his MBA. I can introduce myself, but yeah, go ahead, Kyle. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we met here in uh, in Atlanta uh, together and uh, so, uh, you know, we were both uh, really interested in cryptocurrencies um, and blockchain and that general space. Um, and we got yeah. to thinking about it um, and we thought we could really do something. Tom is like really much a builder um, and I was really obsessed with re- researching the entire space and combing through all the white papers and figuring yeah, out. I'd been, I'd been in fintech for many years, just the tinkering and stuff like that, doing my own side projects. I mean, I wasn't uh, actually working. I was a principal engineer at a, uh, you know, private sector, large company uh, for about 15 years, you know, wearing many different hats, software, you know, leading software teams, uh, dev teams, uh, you know, uh, architecture, um, you know, working in server rooms, stuff like that. But I, I was also uh, kind of in my spare time, I, you know, I was a Forex trader for many years and I was also doing algorithmic trading bots and stuff in Forex. So I was kind of in FinTech for a while. And then I got really interested in crypto and I knew Kyle and, you know, we started talking and it, you know, kind of went from there. Okay. So you guys met, you know, you guys are looking to see what type of synergies there are. You guys, um, seems like you guys, it seems like you guys could work well together now, how did this kind of turn into an idea, Kyle? Um, and you know, what what was kind of the formation of the 
of the idea translating into some type of business slash blockchain project? So I had kind of been um, like banding about, so like way back, Stanley Kulichov of Ethland, he made a thread looking for somebody to give input um, on Ethland and he was offering some kind of bounty for it. And um, I went and I had been thinking about um, a business kind of like Lending Tree at that time. Okay. And, and um, Kyle, just for the audience, can you just give, can you just unpack what ETHLEND is, uh, what the benefit of that is, and I guess how is that better or, or similar to, you know, what we see now with BlockFi and some of these other, you know, things like yeah. SAS and all that. So ETHLEND is like decentralized peer-to-peer -peer loans where everybody can set their own uh, terms. It's, it's sort of like an OTC clearinghouse. Okay. Loans, but at that time, uh, nobody had really known uh, like it wasn't it wasn't completely clear what the vision for Ethland was. Sure. Uh, just thinking about like maybe reputational based loans, um, you know, kind of things like creating a credit score. So we got in a chat and we started talking a lot about well, how do you bootstrap up a credit score? Like, can you use people's social graph? Can you use writing samples and extract, you know, like their personality features from it? There's there's things for that. Um, and we just kept talking about lending and all of that. And while we were talking, I kind of started having this idea because I really wanted to lend out on Bitfinex, but I was afraid it would get hacked. And so I started kind of like ending about this idea with him for something at the time I was calling Banker that would have been um, built on Bancor. Um, and that's that was like the very uh, germ of the idea. Okay. Then, um, me and Tom got to talking and he was like, yo man, you know, I'm just really looking to build something. Like I'm looking to move on. I'm looking to, you know, he just, Tom is the kind of person who like kind of compulsively builds and codes. Sure. Did he really say the word yo? I just want to, you know, make sure that's, <laughs> that's the record. That's on the record. Huh? Tom, did you say, uh, did you say yo? Like I want to build something, yo. Uh, uh. <laughs> I, I think uh, Kyle's uh, paraphrasing a bit, um, right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we, we definitely wanted to, uh, you know, I, I was looking for a new project. I, I've kind of done some, uh, some other things Yeah. Uh, and I was looking for actually something to get into uh, in blockchain, like, and uh, you know, I really wanted to get in full time on something. So I started talking to Kyle and we came up with the idea and uh, we started iterating on it and development started and, you know, you introduced in the beginning uh, Fulcrum, but you know we, we built BZX first, which is the base protocol that powers Fulcrum. Okay. So that's what we worked on for the majority of the time. And in the last few months, we've really been um, developing Fulcrum on top of that. Got it. So let's unpack that a little bit. So BZX, what was your MVP? Um, who were the users? And uh, what helped you to decide kind of the, the initial features of, of that? So uh, BZX, we created um, as very much as an open protocol that was aimed uh, more at developers okay. rather than um, us trying to attract users. So this was, you know, this was way back in 2017, back when uh, people were not productizing quite as much and there's a lot more focus on building developer community. So what we looked at when we were building BZX was let, let's build shorting, like let us be the zero X of shorting. Okay. That's the same. And leverage, and, yeah. And yeah, so like when we, when we took every step, we kind of looked at zero X. We we're like, okay, what are we doing? What are they doing? We really like how they've conducted themselves. Yeah. So how do we uh, sort of create this sister project that, that does all this in the same ethos, in the same spirit, um, similar go-to-market strategy. So um, when we launched, we started talking to every zero X uh, relayer, um, and we're like, "Hey, you know, do you want to incorporate BZX so you can be, you know, a B zero X relay?" Um, and we got a lot of traction from that. In ways, the, the thing is that there's only a few zero X relays that ended up getting zero X liquidity. And that's a prerequisite for really thinking about trying to get traction for margin. And so it ended up that like Bamboo Relay integrated us first 
around September of uh, 28 of September of 2018. Um, and bamboo tends to be like kind of at the front of all the tech developments, even though they're not well known. Um, you know, they're like the first to have all these different wallet integrations, Wallet Connect, um, every, uh, you know, Portis, uh, Portmatic, all of this other stuff. Um, Bamboo is the first to um, like be integrated into the 0x mesh. They were the first to have B0x and margin lending on their platform. So they, they, they contribute a lot of dev cycles towards um, having their tech at the front. And so we were uh, first with them. Um, and then the others were sort of more hesitant about it. Some like we got put on the roadmaps of about eight or so zero X relays. Um, but for a lot of them, they still haven't reached that part of their roadmap. Um, but the one that has that, you know, is, is going forward with us is Ethanex, which is a really big deal for us because they can mirror zero X liquidity from their centralized Bitfinex order book and they can mirror their margin order books onto BZX. And so we could actually get, have the best lowest slippage um, by using uh, BZX on ETHPNX and dr essentially drawing from their centralized liquidity through 0x in a uh, decentralized and non-custodial way. Okay, and for some of our users that don't have a FinTech background, um, can you just unpack the value of the 0x relay and how that kind of ties into the whole uh, technology stack? Yeah, so you know, in order to in order to actually get into a position, you need two things. You need first some source of uh, excess funds, right? So if you want to leverage, you're essentially trading with someone else's funds. Yeah. Trade, but so you've got someone else's funds, but now you need to swap them out to actually be trading. Got so, it. Um, in in that sense, zero X is great because it provides a decentralized source of funds to trade with. Uh, we also use Kyber, but um, obviously using both um, is the best possible route because uh, you, you, liquidity is sort of siloed um, and fragmented among these and uh, you, you get less slippage, which is, which is uh, be, getting it at a price that's farther away from what you're quoted as the market price. So you want to avoid slippage and that's why Xerox is important, Kyber is important. And getting it to get and also for educational purposes, you know, what, what causes slippage, um, you know, what, what are some ways that other people are kind of mitigating slippage? Yeah, so slippage, slippage happens when there's only so many people selling at a given price. Like, say the Ethereum is $100, right? But there might only be one person selling Ethereum for $100, yeah. and they're only selling one ETH worth. Right. So if you buy from them, the next person down who might be selling at 90, now you've incurred $10 of slippage if you're yeah. trying to sell two ETH. So the way you get around slippage is you, you have to realize that uh, liquidity is fragmented and you need to unfragment that liquidity. You need to put it all together. You need to aggregate it. Um, and so, um, you know, in the DEX space, the liquidity is a lot thinner than it is in the yeah. centralized space. Um, but there's, you know, there's been limitations that a lot of people have faced um, in, in terms of limiting slippage uh, because of uh, have, like how they operate their price feeds, um, how they verify um, the, the valuation of assets and how they operate their margin calls. Mm -hmm. it, um, it's very restrictive in terms of being able to aggregate and unify liquidity. Um, but, uh, you know, with ETHNX, because we're able to get that centralized liquidity and it's such a deep pool, um, that's, that's one way we're able to address that. Um, we're able to kind of combine 0x and Kyber. That's another way. Um, and yeah, so uh, we, we are taking approaches to aggregating liquidity and really providing a deep pool that I don't think a lot of other people are. Okay. No, it's really helpful. I appreciate you breaking that down. Um, and then as far as kind of the vision for the new product that you guys built, 
Um, what helped you kind of come up with that synthesis to say, hey, you know what, now we need to build Fulcrum, you know, on top of BZX? So, like, to, to go back to the germ of the idea, so I talked to Tom, and he was like, yeah, I really want to build something. And I was like, you know what, I, I have an idea. Let me, let me go think on this. And I, I went and I talked to my wife, and I'm like, oh, man, Tom, he's, he's like one of the best coders ever. And he wants to build something with me. This is an incredible opportunity. I can't squander this. Um, so is your wife an engineer? Um, did she, could she, she technically knows vouch? Tom. She knows Tom. Okay, so, so it's more on the fact that she knows Tom, she knows he's a hard worker, and she, she's, she believes in him, right? Yeah, well, I was, just, I was just, you know, going and talking to her to kind of vent a little bit. I'm like, oh, man, yeah. you know, <laughs> like our friend Tom, he wants, he wants to work on a project together. And this is an incredible opportunity because Tom gets things done. He builds, he's an he's just incredibly talented. So I you know, stepped yeah. on it and I, I wrote out this like seven page vision paper. And oh, nice. um, in it, you know, we had the eye tokens, we had fulcrum, we had, um, we had, we're, we're actually on step phase two uh, of the vision paper of three. Um, and we've, we've been kind of following that um, since from the beginning, yeah. the last two years now. So Tom, do you have anything nice to say about Kyle? You know, it sounds like he's got some great vision, but uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he's definitely got great vision. He's, he's a hard worker as well. And it, you know, it's, a, it's been a pleasure, uh, you know, building this with him. So. No, it's but. awesome. Yeah, but but also with Fulcrum, we, we kind of, as we went along, kind of realized that we needed really something, we needed to productize. We needed something that was user yeah. facing. Building a developer community yeah. is great. Building a, a really powerful protocol is great. But if we really want to get users quicker, then we need something that we can put out there and people can just go use and that has a beautiful intuitive UX, all that stuff. So okay. that really drove us to, uh, you know, really hit the ground running on Fulcrum. So Tom, do you do the UX and UI as well? Or do you have other people on your team that help? We have a designer, Kyle actually does a lot of UX himself. Oh, cool. we, and we also have, you know, a couple designers and stuff like that. Yeah. That's great. So um, I, go ahead, Kyle. Yeah, like when the product starts, basically I like, you know, I go into, I'm not like a designer designer, but I go into MS Paint and I say, okay, we're going to have price here. We're gonna have these buttons here. We'll have this text here. And I more or less, you know, do the chicken scratch outline of it. So like for Fulcrum, I was like, okay, here's where all the buttons go. Here's where everybody see, here's how the user flow is gonna work. And then we get our UX designer. And usually sometimes he has a few uh, words to have with me about something yeah. that doesn't make sense from a UI UX perspective. Um, and then, you know, he pretties it up and he polishes it. And we, and we like go back and forth and iterate on it. Um, and then like, uh, you know, Tom and our other developer, Alex, um, they, they'll go and they'll kind of um, like shore it up, especially like Tom more on the back end, Alex more on the front end. Um, and yeah, that's like the general process of getting these things out. Yeah, no, and I was really excited to hear a lot of the announcements that you guys put out on Telegram, you know, especially in the decentralized finance uh, communities, you know, so I'm glad, you know, I'm personally glad that I'm able to spend some time with you guys. Yeah, uh, definitely. No, I mean, it's awesome. And I think what will be really valuable for the audience um, is possibly maybe having one of you guys share your screen, maybe kind of go through an overview um, on the product. Um, and so just speaking of exciting um, announcements and all of that on the Telegram, uh, I'm not sure if you saw the latest one on the DeFi channel, but uh, Augur just made a blog post. Um, for Augur yep. version 2.0, uh, BZX is going to be powering their margin lending and margin trading. Yeah, so. and, their, and their version two. We, we've been really talking to them, uh, you know, quietly for a long time, working through it. We built a, um, oh, Kyle, you just froze up. We built a, uh, a, 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 pro, a proof of concept uh, we have, and, and like a working prototype, mm -hmm. Joey Krug, and, uh, you know, demoed it for him and kind of iterated on what it can do and all that. So we've, we've kind of been uh, sitting on this one for a while. So it's really exciting that we're finally announcing that, um, you know, once Augur version two comes out later in the year that we're going to be powering their uh, margin trading and lending. 
So that's really cool. So it's margin trading for prediction markets, I guess, right? So right, they're right. Up, you're going to be on the back end kind of helping them do that. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, and we also and built a widget. We built that the user interface as well for it. Right, right. Mm -hmm. We built a widget that will actually plug into their UI that, uh, you know, makes it easy to, you know, borrow on margin and, and trade auger markets. Yeah, so you can lend out your auger markets and earn interest on them uh, for people who are looking to short them. Uh, this only applies to scalar markets. Um, so uh, you can also borrow die um, and go long on auger markets and you yeah. know, you can four times leveraged on an auger market or something like that if you wanted to. Um, and yeah, we're really excited about that. It'll can we see, do you guys have a demo of that as well? Just kind of in a test environment of how it integrates? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, we do. Um, on I the think our, it, actually. Yeah, we, our, uh, our prototype is actually pretty rough UI though, we, but we have yeah. a design screen for how it's gonna look okay. once we actually launch. So I don't know if, uh, you wanna show those, Kyle? Yeah, yeah, um, I'll, I'll show those as well. So let's, yeah, let's look at the BZS, BZX exchange. Let's look at how that's evolved, uh, you know, with full crumb and then, you know, if you have the auger market stuff. Um, the integration, that'd be really great to see. Okay, do you guys see my screen? We can. I can at least. Right. So to, to kind of start out, you know, you have two options. You, you lend or you trade. So say you want to earn interest. And pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. So say you want to lend out your ETH. Mm -hmm. You see that this is the interest rate here. It's very low. This is per year. So there's, there's two sides to this. One is that, okay, the interest rates for lending are very low. Um, that's bad for lenders, so you might not want to lend out. However, mm -hmm. upside of that, the interest rates for borrowing are very low. So if you're somebody who wants to borrow, you want to trade, um, this is the best platform to do it because we have rock bottom rates. The reason for this is because we have a lot of lenders right now compared to the amount of borrowers we have. Sure. How do you see that evolving in the next couple of years? You know, I mean, obviously people are hodling. Um, you know, do you see that changing? Because for me, right, I, I do have a lot um, and I'd be interested in lending, but in, you know, the, to your point, right, the, the rate is kind of low. So do you, do you see that changing with supply and demand and, you know, the evolution of just crypto becoming more um, widely adopted? So it's not even it's it's not even anything as far flung as that. Um, basically, we we started off like we had a lot of supporters. We kind of seeded the platform with liquidity. Sure, um, that means that the utilization rates right now are pretty low. Like we have like eight hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, the in, amount being lent is way greatly outweighs the amount being borrowed right now. That's why the interest rates are so low. Got it. So the the more the the higher the utilization percentage becomes uh, the smaller the spread between the lending and the borrowing rates uh, uh, also become. So, um, you know, it, it, like, in fact, uh, there was, we had a surge in borrowing a few days ago and the yeah. down interest rate uh, came up to about 7.2%. So um, it, it's, it's something that could easily change within days to weeks, months at most. Yeah. But I'd say probably in the scope of weeks, these interest rates will very likely be much higher. Got it. And your calculation just automatically adjusts based on the su supply and demand. Very it's fully algorithmic. Hard. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it just happens on its own. Exactly. It, looks like, it looks like the highest rate is for USDC at the moment. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. That's great. Okay. okay, so, and I guess, you know, what is your vision? Do you, tr are you hoping, um, you know, that you're able, you know, I guess when you get more users and you get more demand, um, that will possibly help to pump up the, the interest rate for lenders, right? Exactly. So we're, we're engaging in um, basically, like you can think of setting the interest rate model as acting like the central bank. So we're, and we're engaged, you know, so central banks engage in like interest rate targeting, yeah. right? They're trying to get GDP growth to be um, about, you know, a, about even maybe 3%, 4%, uh, want to smooth out highs and lows. We have, we have a similar thing where we're utilization rate targeting. So we want 
reserves to be about 80% used. So we're going to kind of move the interest rates uh, model around a little bit to get that kind of 80% utilization. And just, you know, if it, if it goes above that, we might move it up a little bit, the, the rates up a little bit. If it goes below that, we move the rates down a little bit. So we target that sweet spot. And we'd like to uh, implement a governance process that can sort of decentralize it because, you know, this is, this is a fairly algorithmic process, right? Like it's above it, okay, you know, move it a little bit so it goes below, et cetera. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And why don't you guys have Bitcoin? We, we do, we do right oh, here. Know. Oh, sorry, I, look, uh, I, I guess I got thrown off with a W. Um, WBT. Yeah, yeah, that's that's rat Bitcoin. Yeah. Got it. But so okay, so the you said wrapped Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. This is this is a ERC twenty um, wrapped version of Bitcoin. So okay. it's it's fully backed by actual Bitcoin in a uh, with a custodian. Got it. Okay, cool. So that's um, that's there's a there's an API that can be provided to just. Um, integrate with, I guess, right, as a ERC-20 protocol. And I guess, did you do that because you are all of these kind of working similarly as kind of some type of wrapper or the other ones? No, are just, just Bitcoin because, you know, Bitcoin's on a different chain and all that, part of uh, the WBTC consortium. Um, okay. And so it's supporting it and, you know, we believe in the product. Um, but we're not a merchant of it. So if you wanted to, like, if you wanted to exchange your existing Bitcoin for WBTC, yeah. you'd have to go to a merchant like BitGo um, or Kyber or something like that and go through a KYC process. And, and Got get, it. Okay. So if you do want to withdraw it, let's say you lent out WBTC and now it's time to cash out. You do have to go through a custodian. Well, right? you, you can, I mean, people that are transacting with WBTC uh, probably want to keep it in that so they can use it in DeFi. I mean, eventually, and you yeah. know, they, then they can go and swap it for ETH or something. Mm -hmm. If they really want to go through the burning process, they can do that, but yeah. there's like a fee to burn, to get actual Bitcoin out. So it's usually right. most people that want to transact with Bitcoin in, uh, on Ethereum. That's yeah, cool. I mean, so the easiest way is for them to just move it to Ethereum, right? I mean, they'll get the- Yeah, yeah you, go to, you go out to Kyber and, and sell some ETH to buy wrapped Bitcoin or vice versa. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So if you want to get rid of your rat Bitcoin, you could just sell it for ETH. Got um, it. That's cool. And then do you have to log in with MetaMask? Is that the best way? Look, I see you guys are integrated with that. So well, show, them, uh, show them the other wallets, Kyle. Yeah, so there's a number of different options. Oh, cool. That you can choose. So okay. Matic, Portis, Bitski. We just integrated Squarelink. Haven't announced that yet, but uh, happy to be working with them. Some, some smart guys. Well, we're going to be adding Wallet Connect soon as well. Got it. Which wallet do you think is, do you recommend for users? Um, which ones have you heard are like the best? Um, we hear good things about Nifty. Nifty? It's a POA network. They okay. create a wallet. Yeah, that that's, a, uh, that's, that's a MetaMask-like wallet. There's actually more wallets we do support than are shown here. Like under the Mat MetaMask heading, we're probably going to change that to say something else. But Nifty Wallet is one um, mm -hmm. and several others. And why is Nifty the best in your opinion? I mean, we just hear good. We, I mean, we just hear good things about. Well, no, it. I mean, the, these these other these other wallets here that are non MetaMask wallets, they're also great. So, okay. uh, you know, yeah, they're, they're also great. They're, they'll but, they'll hate us if we don't shout them out. But. <laughs> <laughs> they're all great. They're amazing. Yeah, I just I was I was wondering if there's a you know just based on user feedback if there's one or two that people suggest. But I, I, I mean, you know, definitely hear good things about. Well, I I don't want to play favorites because yeah, exactly. Like if I if I say one thing about one of them, I'll hear from the other guys. Like, okay. <laughs> okay, for the record, we'll we'll assume they're all great. Okay, how's that? <laughs> I think the most the most widely used out of all these, uh, would you say Portis, Kyle? I, it's hard to say. Who has the Maybe biggest? Portis user? or Fortmatic? Well, I yeah, mean, yeah. Next thing we know, Bitsky gets mad at us. So. Got Bitsky. it. Bitsky's great too. Then. Yeah, they're all great. They're all. I mean, they're they're all like very easy to integrate. Um, it's like just a few yeah. lines of code. It all works fantastic. Yeah. They all have their pros and cons, but they're fan they're all great. They all Got it. Great. Sounds great. Um, cool. So what happens when you lend? So can you click on lend? Do you just integrate in with your, uh, 
wallet. Yeah, right now, right now he's connected to his MetaMask wallet. So now it, it you pull this up and it's going to detect how much ETH you have in your wallet. Yeah. Or you could click Weath, which is wrapped ETH. We also support that. Cool. Um, so how does Weath? How does W E T H work? Is that just another protocol? It, yeah. Well, it's a smart contract uh, yeah. that basically you just. Uh, send in your ETH and you get back an equivalent amount of ETH. And then, because a lot of protocols need uh, only support ERC-20 tokens. They might yeah. not work directly with e either. Okay. So you wrap it and then either behaves like an ERC-20. Okay. That's the point is that, that a common thing? You know, to, I'll be honest, this is the first time I've kind of seen the, the wrapped currencies. Um, is that, are you starting to see that as a trend with a lot of different, uh, you know, lending platforms, just kind of wrapping it to make it just much easier and more seamless to, get access yeah. to for sure yeah especially in 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 defi uh because you know it's it's easier to design your your protocol to work with the erc20 than yeah. e either behaves a little bit differently so it's e easier just to wrap it and yeah. then so you, you can I, I'd, it say, I'd say the trend is is like everybody uses weave the question is do they use it behind the scenes or do you consciously deal with it so yeah. like if you want to trade on ETH to die yeah First, rapid, uh, rapid and weak. If you want to trade on zero X, you have to yeah, first rapid yeah. and weak on Kyber Network, etc. So uh, some places have abstracted away, so you don't even realize you're dealing with weak. You just okay. think you're dealing with ETH. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and at, at the end of the day, it still does the same thing. It's just how exactly. it's yeah behind the scenes. So then I hit lend, and then my wallet will just update um, on on this platform and on my wallet provider's screen. Yeah. yeah once, we, you, once you go ahead, Kyle. Weath is so widely used; it's actually the number one DeFi protocol by by a lot to volume. Okay. Yep. Cool. <laughs> That's good to know. Yeah. Once you Very once you said you're submitting a uh, like he's lending ETH, so we're going to send in ETH directly. Okay. And that's going to, um, what's backing these are, are what we call I tokens. They're interest bearing versions of each of these assets. So we have IETH, IDAI, et cetera. So he's going to go and he's sending ETH in. Mm -hmm. sending and, and as you'll notice, the gas cost is very little. We've, we've um, really improved in the last few days. Um, our uh, gas estimate, gas fee estimation. Yeah. So now, oh, so we now, can't actually see your MetaMask uh, pop up, Kyle. On, oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Not. Yes, I see. But, but um, I see, I see the I progress see. screen. Yeah, we see Maybe. progress, but we can't see his MetaMask screen. Oh, okay. So. Well, I clicked submit now, so yeah. yeah. But, so, uh, so what happens once this submits? You're actually getting a uh, IE uh, back in your wallet, which is an ERC twenty interest bearing version of ETH. So now, now he has that I, he sent in, what did you just mm -hmm. send in? 0.1 ETH, Kyle? Yeah. So yeah. you got back 0.1 ETH equivalent of IETH. Okay. In wallet. So now he has a token that he can send to other people. He can go sell it on an exchange. Yeah. He can do whatever he wants with it. But while he holds it in his wallet, it's, it's constantly every block accruing interest. So okay. later tomorrow he goes and wants to sell back his IETH. He's going to get back more ETH than he put in. Yeah, sure. Um, so wait, so if I unlend and, and this, does this dynamically slowly update over the year? Is that what that does? So the, zero, yeah, the, the interest, as long as there's borrowers borrowing ETH, yeah. it, it's going to constantly, every single block, it's going to increase a little bit. Got it. So you'll kind of slowly, and I think that's a good engaging experience for users, right? To kind of slowly see it grow every couple of days, right? You won't have to wait till the end of the yeah, year. If you, Kyle, cancel real quick. I want to show one thing. Can you click? Click cancel. Hover your mouse over the profit dollars. See? Okay. Well, there's nothing yet. It's like, yeah. <laughs> but you know, in a block or two, there'll be like a really small amount in there. Okay. So it just constantly updates. Yeah. So it's, it's compounding every 15 seconds. Got it. Yeah. And the balance, that's how much you put in, right? That's the equivalent of ETH of how many you, fiat, exactly. fiat dollars you've put in to loan out, right? Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, okay, cool. And then when, and so when you unlend, does that just stop it? And then you can, how do you cash out? Let, well, Unlend is actually, because he received this IE token in his wallet. Unlend is actually selling, burning that IE token. So it's basically sending that back in, sending you back the equivalent amount of ETH for that. Okay. So if you click so then, on Lend, Kyle, yeah, it shows you 
this is how much I ETH he has right now. He got he's he sent one point one ETH in and he got back point zero zero you know zero nine nine because the price of I ETH has increased. Uh, it starts out at, at one, one to one, yeah. and it slowly increases over time. So now he's selling this and he's gonna I mean he's gonna get back the same ETH he put in because he just lent it. But if just lent it, it yeah. tomorrow he'd be getting back more ETH. So is there a transaction fee when you try to get make the money back as well? Yeah, yeah. No, we don't paying, charge any fees. No, we yeah, we don't charge fees. You're just paying the gas cost of uh, transacting on Ethereum. Okay, got it. And how much do you think that usually is? Let's for this example here. Uh, it, it was twenty one cents. Okay, got it. So it'd be a small amount, um, and it's great when you made a significant amount of profit, right? I mean, if you're able to put some money in, you know, that gas would be negligible, right? Right. Yeah, right. exactly. So you know, it's been like two weeks. And um, our biggest lender of DAI and USDC, they made about $100 so far. Okay. Which is really good considering how low the rates are, I guess. Yeah. yeah it, doesn't, it doesn't take that long to, to make a decent amount to totally rate 20 cents. Sure. Got it. And I guess if some people are using like, do you, do you, are you guys integrated in with like Coinbase Pro? No. No? Okay. And I mean, but the, the, we are we are talking to some places that will list these I tokens yeah. on their exchange. So uh, we're like Teradex and uh, Ethernex. Exactly, exactly. We should be. Uh, we're working out the details with them. But once we list on there, people can, uh, you know, just buy I tokens there, or they can, you know, they can very easily get into interest-bearing assets. Okay. Um, so when they buy the I tokens, then they can. They should be able to store them in any of the wallets that you have listed. You can put them. You can you put them in cold storage. You can send them to an exchange. Send them to your friend. Whatever you want to do. And you can yeah. send uh, portions of them. So he has like might have point one. He could send point oh one or something. Just you know, you can split it up however you want. Yeah. What exchange? Do you know what exchanges those are going to be available on? Well, right right now, uh, you know, basically Ethernex and Paradex are the ones we're talking to. Yeah, and, and I'm sure De and, and Dexes will also be adding it. But as far as centralized uh, Ethernex. Bitfinex? Yes. Okay, got it. Cool. Okay, and then now you got the trade view here. I guess is there a high level, as far as lending, the best way to look at that is just a tile view that you had, right? There isn't like, is there kind of like an aggregate view of how much you you know, lent out so far? Like if you go back to lend. Yeah, I guess is there an aggregate view or the best way to, to is just to kind of look at all your tiles? Yeah, yeah, right now we just have this. I mean, you can, um, you know, I'm sure third, third party people will be, I mean, there's already other places that are integrating with us and they'll have their own. They'll, they'll show the data in different ways and stuff like that. So you, can offer, so you can offer, you can offer this whole feed as a service and then other people can kind of yeah, these, these are all just smart contracts. So anyone, you don't even need, if you know what you're doing, you can yeah. do all this lending directly with the blockchain. You don't even have to come here and do it. Okay. So. Got it. You got, but you guys are just making it easier for users to do it. Right. Right. Yeah. Cool. No, that's awesome. Um, okay, cool. Then let's go to the trading section. All right. So Kyle, you want to walk us through this? Yeah. So uh, you see there's uh, different interest rates. Um, there's different assets pri asset prices. There, there are different liquidation prices. They'll, those will change depending on the amount of uh, leverage that you're taking out, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, say I want to get into um, a 2x leverage position, right? So currently the price is 267.63 and uh, the uh, liquidation price is 183.54, right? So, and I see that the interest rate is about 9.8%. The reason for this is because, uh, you know, a lot of people going along, you borrow die. Um, going short, you borrow ETH. So there's a lot more people borrowing DAI than there are borrowing ETH. That's why the interest, the lending rate uh, is much higher um, than uh, for DAI than it is for ETH. So, so this, okay, so can we take a step back here, go back for a second? So this is where you can 
buy, this is not the same thing as borrowing, right? Or is it the same? This is, this is borrowing. We just call it buy. Because what you're buying, because backing our, our in here, when you open a position, you're buying a P token, which is a tokenized po leveraged position. So it's yeah. basically a tokenized version of a loan. So that's why we say buy, because you're still buying a P token. Got but it. you're okay. actually entering a leveraged trade. Got it. So can you can you hit cancel real quick? Just want to unpack this again for our, our audience. Um, so if you can X out of that screen, right? So ETH, you're saying the two X price of that, if you add leverage, um, increases the asset price by two, right? It, it, I guess it exponentially increases all of these attributes, right? So if you hit like, go to three X. So that just, so that, that just three X is the what was the biggest, because it, it didn't jump too much in the asset price, right? From 2X to 3 It didn't, what was the price at 2X? So 269 is 3X. Three, three okay. Yeah, so why isn't there like a huge jump when you change the leverage from well, 2 to 3 The leverage info is, uh, we are going to be making some UI changes to make okay. it a little bit clear. But, but the leverage number is based on, because when you're buying a P token, you're buying into a shared yeah trade so there's there's already some people that own this and so it's not like uh the liquidation price might be higher or lower based on how the underlying position is doing so it i know it's a bit, bit misleading right now we've gotten some feedback on that so we're, yeah. we're making some changes well no, i mean worries. i i mean i think as far as like why is it not changing that much that's just how the math works out Got um, it. right 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 you know, so like it's 50 percent um you know versus or it's, it's about, so like, you know, initial margin is 50%, mm -hmm. and is like 15%. And then, um, then for like 3X initial margin is 33% and liquidation is uh, 15%. But um, there's also um, some differences in uh, like, or uh, how to explain this? Um, Oh, the, the the gap in between the prices is yeah. just due to the math of that. Okay. Um, but it's not, um, there is some things in play um, influencing the liquidation price. Yeah. So um, like the liquidation price right here for, you know, 4X is at like 258.91. Yeah. Probably uh, like, so when we institute base protocol loans and automatic switching between the P tokens and the base protocol loans, that's probably going to make it so the liquidation price is a little bit further away. So yeah. now it's like, it's kind of like closer than it would be um, yeah. because of that. Okay. So now as a user, right, looking at the short opportunity, right, if I bought this, I'm trying to think of like, I'm trying to think of the context of borrowing, right? So I'm borrowing, uh, 267.98 worth of ETH, right? So I'm borrowing that. And then the liquidation price, who would who would get that? Well, it, it, it depends on when, <clears throat> excuse me. It depends it's not, on when. It's, it's, not, it's not a who. No. So the liquidation price is like, you, you're at, you lose your exposure to that position at 493, right? So say you're doing XE. So what that means is that a margin call is initiated. So you would put up collateral, right? And that collateral needs to be liquidated to pay back the lender in full. And that'll only happen at 493 because you've lost too much of your uh, collateral. Um, like, so if it, the price keeps moving against you, you won't be able to pay it back at all. And the lender won't be made whole. But gotcha. there's so we have to close it out to protect lender and, and trader assets. Got it. So the liquidation price is also kind of incorporating the collateral that you put up. It's like, hey, if you want to, if you do want to, you know, exit out of it, that's the price uh, at the liquidation that you need to, that you need to accommodate, right? Mm -hmm. Got it. And then I guess the interest is lower um, because it's when it's short. And that's kind of a factor that you're looking at when comparing to die as well, right? Because yeah, yeah. Because right when you're shorting ETH, you're <clears throat> you're you're borrowing ETH, and then you're swapping it for die or USDC. Yeah. So the borrow rate for ETH is much lower right now. Got it. And I guess with this, is there a better? Have you gotten feedback 
from users as far as like what you're swapping it with? Like, would it be beneficial to show, hey, you know what, like this product, this this top line here, you're swapping it with dye, or is it just better, or does it not matter to show it? And you just got, you guys just use your algorithm to make that. Call. Yeah, yeah, we we're, were gonna make it so it, you know, they can they can they can pick between them if they. I wish mean, we do have an advanced option that they want to pick yeah. between them, but we uh, we're putting some logic in that'll kind of pick what's what's best for them. Yeah, like has the lowest rates, stuff like that. That's just great. To automate all that. That's awesome. Um, no, that's a, that's a good feature because then you don't you know I, I think the less less decisions a user has to make the better and you're exactly you know, it'd be great to also give them some type of treatment saying hey you know what like by the way we're actually choosing the best price for you um you know and that might be good treatment for them um but that's awesome so then you go to buy which is lending pretty much right so you want to borrow we want to go short on eth or, or or long whichever one you want to pick so we went short and you choose how much you want to borrow so 0.1 ETH. And what's in the advanced? Oh, sorry. Let me... Uh, Never mind, too late. I'll show you, I'll show yeah. you in a second. Sorry. Um, I, I think this product is really awesome, so I'm just really curious to see all the cool things you guys have in here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah we're hoping to roll out some updates uh, fairly soon that should add additional, yeah. additional things, so... Got it. All right. So, and, you know, the whole process is asynchronous, so... Yeah. <laughs> to lend and lend you see it says updating the blockchain yeah so you don't have to wait for it once you've gotten to that point you can go and you can do other stuff oh cool okay so it does it in the background uh, yeah so you're not you're not like waiting for it you can see what the progress is if you want but you're not uh you're not being held up by it yeah. um, we thought you know is we thought it that, that being asynchronous was a really important project mm -hmm was it a very important feature for us just because yeah. we don't want people waiting around for it. Yeah. Here, here's what, uh, what you asked if they could pick between them, here's where you'd pick it, whether you're swapping for die or USDC. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So they can pick, but I guess, yeah, once you guys have that auto feature, um, it'll just auto, it'll automatically come up on the, on the best one for them. Then they go into advance and change it if they want. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, great. Yeah. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, okay. And I guess, you know, I know you guys have gotten some traction, so tell me how you guys have been kind of evangelizing this product. And, um, you know, I think you guys, you guys had a bunch of signups recently as well, right? Yeah. So we, we definitely had a bunch of people using it and we've been getting feedback and I mean, the feedback is just tremendous. The things that people are saying, they're like, you know, this is easier to use than signing into my Facebook account. Or yeah. This is like the Uniswap margin. Or, you know, like, I think I could send this to my relatives and they could use it. Yeah. And so we, we really like the feedback that we've gotten. Um, you know, there's just a few things to tweak, like showing slippage and uh, automatic trade sizing and stuff mm -hmm. like that um, for our more advanced users. Some people have asked for, like, uh, more advanced charting. Yeah. To look into. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, uh, we, we basically, we just made a Reddit post, uh, you know, announcing it and posted on our Telegram and Discord and kind of went around to like the DeFi Telegram and yeah. other Discord channels and we're just like, hey, check out what we did. And uh, that's about it. Okay. No, it's exciting. Um, you know, I really appreciate you guys going through this with me. This is really helpful. I also appreciate your patience kind of helping to unpack some of these topics. I know a lot of uh, people are still learning, right? So I think I, you know, I think that's really helpful, uh, not only for me, but you know, my audience. So I think this was amazing, um, you know, and I'll do whatever I can to help you guys out, you know, I mean, as far as evangelism, I'll, I'll share the, this video out. Uh, we'll get this on the podcast. Um, anything that you guys would like to share additionally, as far as, where you see uh, DeFi heading and, uh, you know, where you see kind of just uh, blockchain heading and, you know, with, the, with all the news of like just the things that are happening recently, uh, what, what are the thoughts you guys have? Yeah, I mean, there, with, with like Facebook coming into the field, yeah. I think this is potentially really I think it's, you know, a lot of people are apprehensive about it. 
like you know maybe people who are MakerDAO fans, uh, people who are Bitcoin fans, yeah, who are uh, EOS fans. I, I don't know. Uh -huh. It's a thing. Um, but you know, some people are a little apprehensive about it, and uh, it's a huge on ramp uh, into crypto for right. just the average everyday person. And I'm really curious to see how Facebook facilitates. Uh, like a physical U.S. dollar or a U.S. dollar in your bank and turning that into a Libra. But I have a feeling that they can really, they have the money, they have the regulatory um, regulatory power, the legal yeah. power, all that to make this a reality so that people can, I mean, the biggest thing is letting people seamlessly change in. You know, if you could, if you could imagine just being in WhatsApp and just like changing your bank money into Libra yeah. and like being like, send it to, you know, die.tokenloan.eth and boom, like you've loaned it out in Fulcrum or something like that. Yeah, he, he alludes to another thing we're working on, ENS loans. So <laughs> <laughs> you just send your ETH to an address and you're in a loan or you send your ETH, uh, you know, to another address and you're in a, tra in a uh, long position or something yeah. like that. So I think that's going to transform the financial markets. I mean, it's just another asset class that people can get exposure to. I think the only watch point is number one, the transaction fees, and then number two, the gas. And like that still right. needs to be okay. But look, in the financial markets, there's still fees, right? Um, there's still middlemen. There's still higher fees, really. If you do it better and cheaper than the existing public framework, um, then you guys are winning, you know? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're still paying trading fees of like, five dollars on e-trade or something like that exactly so so when you compare that to 20 cents right i mean it's it's a massive transformative thing or or you know 20 cents plus if there are if there is a transaction fee for the platform then so be it it's still still going to be less right <laughs> and, and by the way minting is a little bit more expensive so like when people watch this so they aren't confused minting is a little bit more expensive uh so in terms of minting p tokens it's yeah. more so, so that transaction was about getting a dollar. Getting into a leverage trade because you're also doing like a swap. You're borrowing funds and you're doing a swap into whatever asset you're going, you're leveraging. So there is additional gas there. Just to, okay. yeah. Then, but uh, lending, but then lending. So got it. And you know, and I and I think as long as there's that transparency there, you know, in your and do you guys also do some type of statements or documents at the end of the year, or uh, is that on the roadmap? Because I think that'll help as well. Maybe. That's a really interesting idea, actually. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's integrations though, right? I mean, you could probably, maybe you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You could probably integrate in with like tax token or something else, but um, it might be helpful to say, Hey, you know what, this year I actually blended all this money out and I actually made this money at the end of the year. So I think for me, I'm, but I'm just one user, right? So there's multiple users that care about different things. I think for me at the, you know, I like, I like to kind of see a holistic view as well. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's, yeah. A, that, that the only thing is that we're, we're fully decentralized. We don't store, we don't send your user information to our server or anything like that. So there's no accounts. It's directly from your wallet. So mm -hmm. something like that could be created, but we'd have to uh, probably, you know, store email addresses and things like that. Mm -hmm. so. Sure. I'm sure there's, I'm sure like, you know, some sort of integration where they put in, put in their address and kind of scans the blockchain and does some app. Yeah, yeah, we could do, we could do it with the automated blockchain analysis tool. Or just total the balances, even if you don't need to tie it up to anything. I mean, you know, when I, when I go into the platform, um, just kind of seeing a total, it's like, hey, you know what, you lent this ETH, you lent this WBTC, and hey, you know, like overall, you know, this is what you've made in the last two months. So it might just be like an addition, you know, like. Yeah, yeah, I think we could do something like that, possibly. But again, right, don't don't add it because I'm saying this, you know, I mean, obviously you have to. Well, no, like, this is good feedback. We're, we're getting feedback from everybody. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, hey, guys, thank you so much. This was amazing. Uh, super excited to share this with the community. And, um, you know, feel free to send me all of the links that you want me to plug in and I'll, I'll add that to the, um, to the description as well. Okay. Sounds all good. Right. Thank you so much guys. Have a good one. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.